Universal Epic Universe continues to make stellar progress throughout every corner of the park. From the completed walkways around the well in Dark Universe, to the entrance of Minecart Madness starting to come to life, and the countless new additions inside of How to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke. All of these exciting changes throughout Epic Universe and more on this week's Universal Epic Universe Construction Update, with our aerial views provided to us as always by BioReconstruct. Before we jump in to this update, be sure to subscribe so you do not miss the next Epic Universe Construction Update. Starting this exciting update, in the front of Epic Universe at the park entrance, the Kronos Tower which serves as the beacon of entry to Epic Universe has received new tower supports on top of the entry arch. These will serve as the base to the tallest structure on this side of the park. On either side of the Kronos Tower, there are smaller supports for smaller themed arch features as well as the sculpting for the rock work continues. The concrete in front of the security plaza has been poured with colorful concrete since the last time we have visited Epic Universe. In the back of Epic Universe sits the new Wizarding World of Harry Potter in the streets of Paris, where the concrete streets continue to grow. Two of the five streets have now been completed, as well as underneath of the tent, which serves as the entrance to the theater show. All around the Parisian streets, scaffolding continues to be reinstalled as new artwork is being painted on the fronts of the buildings. Behind the feature ride of the land, in the overflow queue area, steel beams have been installed above this area. These beams will be for a roof to cover guests that are banished to this queue. In between the Wizarding World and Starfall Racers, a new maintenance road has been completed leading from outside of the park towards the entrance portal to the Wizarding World. On the other side of Celestial Park, to the streets of Paris, sits the land based off of Universal Monsters, Dark Universe. The concrete walkways throughout the entire land has been all but complete with the completion of the walkway within the village around the thought to be themed well. These walkways continue all the way near the exit to the land where pathways are beginning to form in Celestial Park. Plywood is beginning to cover the newly poured area around the well to protect the walkway from the ongoing construction. Inside of the tracks of Curse of the Werewolf, a gateway has appeared inside of the queue area as a theming element. More progress inside of the tracks as scaffolding beginning to be installed beneath the tent frames. It is likely that this scaffolding is just the beginning and the scaffolding will completely cover these frames in the coming weeks. Near the barn in the middle of the tracks, we can start to see permanent fencing installed. On the left, we can see the permanent fencing, and on the right, we can see the temporary fencing still in place for ride testing safety. In the shadows of the trees near the manor, which is the front for the feature ride of Dark Universe, we can see more permanent fencing has been installed. Along the roof line of the manor, we can see the curved metal that we first saw last update. No additional metal has been installed since last update, but we can see the framing in place for the installation of this metal along the entire roofline of the manor. Behind the manor, in the overflow queue area, looking closely, we can see that there is paint inside of the area marking the bollards that will wrap guests throughout the queue. It also looks that holes have been drilled as well along these lines, suggesting that we are near weeks away from seeing bollards and chain installed behind the manor. Just outside of the queue area, there is a large amount of dirt that has been placed and is being shaped as a hill directly behind the crypt outside of the queue area. Lastly, the service building behind Burning Blades Tavern has started to see the exterior walls being installed. Next door to Dark Universe, inside of Super Nintendo World, there has been a number of changes to theming throughout every section of the land. As guests enter the land through the trademarked green pipe, they go up to the top level of the Mushroom Kingdom via an escalator and enter through Peach's Castle. Peach's Castle has had two of the turrets begin to receive purple exterior board in preparation to shape the remainder of the castle front. On top of Peach's Castle, we can see a shaped theme wall 
that shields an air handler from guests inside the Mushroom Kingdom. To the right as guests enter the land, two animated trees have been installed as we get closer to seeing the finished product of this entire area. To the left as guests enter the land, we saw a circular themed element in the courtyard. This themed element has now been painted as we know that it is part of the Goomba Rolling interactive activity. Closer to Bowser's Fortress is the entrance to the Bowser Jr. minigame where a mystery box has been added to one of the walls. Near the mystery box is the large thwomp higher up which has had a good bit of color added to the walls surrounding it. Next door is Bowser's Fortress where four of the five turrets can be seen having the majority of the base paint completed awaiting the oversized blocks which can be seen in several other parts sneaking through the scaffolding. Around Mount Beanpole and Yoshi's Adventure, we can see several small themed elements that have been recently installed and are covered in plastic to protect them during the remaining construction. In the lower level of the Mushroom Kingdom, the concrete has been poured for the walkways. In the center of this area, steel frame has started to go vertical, which is believed to be part of the character meet and greet area. In this area as well is the entrance to Yoshi's Adventure, where on either side of the entrance we can see shaped openings in the concrete which is likely space for raised gardens that are similar to the ones found on the top level of the Mushroom Kingdom. Behind the Mushroom Kingdom in Donkey Kong Country, there has been a tremendous amount of changes that we are getting quite used to seeing and are still thrilled to see. Starting with the scaffolding, that was in front of the Golden Temple has been removed, revealing the oversized golden blocks ready for a waterfall to flow over them. To the left of the waterfall, this is where guests will enter the load station building from the outdoor queue area which we saw being poured last update in the corner. This golden concrete has since been covered to protect it from any damage during construction. Alongside the queue area, below part of the tracks, we can see scaffolding being installed around the recently installed metal frame. Looking closer, we can see a device on the coaster tracks to ensure no scaffolding is in the path of the minecarts during continued ride testing. Work on this theming element will continue while the coaster is tested, so this ensures there will be no damage to any part of the ride or jeopardize the safety of the workers. Just on the other side of the walkway, sits the bubbly barrel snack stand which is progressing next to the splash portion of the coaster. We can see the shaped trusses being added and nearly complete on the roof of this snack stand. Looking at the base of the lift hill inside of the coaster building, we can get a good glimpse of the front of one of the mine carts being prepared to be sent down the track. The last detail to go over is around the footers we saw last update. We can see now the foundation starting to take shape for Funky's flying by gift shop. This gift shop will be the location of the plane crash which you can see in all of the renderings. Once again, the land that takes the crown of most exciting progress is How to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke, where there are so many changes to count you will need to get your toes involved in this count. Starting front and center at the land's entry portal, the majority of the painting has been completed on the easily reached area of rockwork. We can start to see scaffolding being installed on the exterior portion of the portal to start painting the higher sections of rockwork. Just inside of the land, around the main lagoon, that greets guests as they enter the land, there has been a new structure added in an area just off of the boardwalk. It is hard to tell what this structure will be used for, but a smoking area could be one option since there are no utilities to this structure. Just past this new structure is Spitfire Grill, where the scaffolding that has surrounded this building for quite some time has been removed. We even have a new surprise of a windmill on top of the tower that is over the bathrooms on this side of the land. The detail around the bathroom side of the building is fantastic. One thing to note is the sign for Spitfire Grill still needs to be painted. Next door to Spitfire Grill 
is the target boat ride of Fire Drill, where the three boats we have seen in the service canal the last several updates have made it into the bride path. Along the walls of Fire Drill, there appears to be additional sculpting going on protected by plastic sheeting. A few paces farther into the land, we make it to several new concrete forms just before getting to the untrainable Dragon Feeder Show and the character meet and greet. These forms are likely for an intersection to point guests in the right direction through the land and a possible point for more dragon theming. Just across the footbridge, over the service canal of Fire Drill, guests are met by the towering mountain on top of Mead Hall, where the scaffolding has been completely removed. This reveals the mossy green covered mountain as well as those two large Vikings guarding the hall. The Vikings still need to be painted though, so it is likely those will be covered in scaffolding once again to be painted. Roofing for the structures inside of the village appear to have the initial roofing completed, as well as several having shaped eaves. On the far side of the village is the entrance to Hiccup's wing gliders, where there has been two smaller wire mesh statues appear since our last update. These statues will likely be hidden in scaffolding in the near future as they are sculpted and painted. Inside of the queue area for Hiccup Swing Gliders, the new tent frame has begun to be installed. Several pieces of this frame can be seen staged on the ground near the existing structure. The load station for the coaster is beginning to receive its themed shingled roof. Along the route of the coaster, the train passes through a large grandstand where dragons inside of dragon houses can be seen. Several of the large vertical beams have been painted as well as box seats have been added at the very top of the grandstand. Just in front of the grandstand is Dragon Racers Rally, where the entrance to this ride has received a themed top as well as some paint lower on. Next to the entrance is where we saw the three additional sheep last update. We can still see them placed there now. In front of the second launch to Hiccup's Wing Gliders sits the kids' play area of Viking Training Camp, where the first pieces of vertical log beams have been installed. There looks to be a floor section placed within the vertical pieces of the frame. Overlooking all of Epic Universe is the Helios Grand Hotel. High above the hotel, on top of the rooftop bar and lounge, is the dome that has seen roofing underlay being installed over the wood that was placed over the corrugated metal roofing panels. There has been another smaller bronze dome placed on the roof overlooking the resort's pool area. Installed on this dome, we can see light fixtures pointed at the peak of the dome. On the ground, there is a second dome that will likely be placed on the circular roof section on the Epic Universe side of the roof. In between the hotel towers and the parking garage for the hotel, we can see another ornamental themed element staged on the ground. This element looks like it is a sun, which, as Alicia from Theme Park Stop pointed out, Helios is the god of the sun. This would only make sense with the element raised high above the hotel entrance. The roads leading up to the hotel have seen some progress as well, as the curbs and now what looks like seal coating is going down in preparation for asphalt. Inside of the pool area, the boundary to the area looks to be making progress as there is now a pathway visible inside of the walls. Both the pool and the hot tub appear to be structurally complete as the piping is beginning to be installed from the pump house. In the shadows of Helios Grand Hotel is the main show fountain of Epic Universe, where there will likely be nightly shows taking place. There have been a number of trees planted in addition to the ones that have been planted around the walkways for several weeks now. The waterfall that will feed the main show fountain has also been turned into a temporary break room for the construction workers on site seen at the picnic table. Around the fountain, about 25% of the circular walkway has been poured and is now protected by plywood, which ends right around Celestiki Bar. At the bar, the initial roofing looks to be completed, and the walls of the bar have been formed. On the opposite side of the fountain sits Meteor Astro Pub, 
where there are several major theming projects going on. First on the roof, there looks to be framing started for a golden peak, like the peaks found on each end of the building. Second, looking closely at the rotunda, we can see some arch walls beginning to be framed on the higher levels of the walls. Lastly, on the large open ends, glass is beginning to be installed along with several other smaller areas. Starfall Racers has seen a good bit of progress as well, including seeing both coaster tracks in motion at the same time and hitting the trademarked Celestial Spin at the same time as well. Behind the coaster building, in the extended queue area, more footers are appearing as we get closer to seeing the completion of this part of the coaster queue. More pathways have also popped up inside of the queue as well. Farther down the coaster tracks, we can see black permanent fencing installed along the maintenance pathway. Directly behind the coaster building, there is a new concrete form as well, which is likely the entrance and exit to the extended queue area. It appears that in the center of this form, there will be a garden or some themed element. Just in front of the entry tunnel to the coaster building, we can see work being done on the entry courtyard with the protective sheeting being removed. We can see a circular concrete form along the perimeter of the courtyard taking shape as well. Between where the coaster trains come head on and the rest of Celestial Park, we can see the footer from last time starting to be reinforced with rebar to create the dividing wall from the coaster and the walking paths inside Celestial Park. Inside of the water feature at the base of Constellation Carousel, new water nozzles are being installed. Zooming out, we can see these nozzles line up with the nozzles in the basin below Atlantic Restaurant. These nozzles form an S-curve, which could play a role in the dancing fountains that we expect to see nightly. Inside of the basin, we can see that the rock work at the edge of the basin is getting prepared to be painted since there is plastic lining inside of the basin floor to ensure that there is no paint spilled on the already painted basin. Moving back to Constellation Carousel, we can see that many of the ribs have been painted fully gold on the inside. There are still several ribs to be finished. Just in front of the entrance to the carousel, we can see what looks like a sign segment laying on the ground being prepared to be installed at the entrance. On the edge of the middle water feature is the kids splash pad area of Astronomica, which looks that the final preparation has been completed for colorful concrete to be poured. Looking closer, we can see that it appears there will be another shooting star on the edge of the splash pad, similar to the one found in front of Starfall Racers. Near the entrance to Super Nintendo World sits the building which houses the Super Nintendo store as well as Pizza Moon. This building is getting stonework completed on the upper sections of the building. Near the entrance to the Super Nintendo store, we can see one of the sections of stonework is nearing completion. At the two quick service dining locations that are the newest projects started in Epic Universe, the floor of the restaurants have been poured since the last time we checked in. The kitchen area of the restaurant looks to be nearly walled in as there is now scaffolding on the inside of the walls looking to be preparing the tops of these walls for roofing. On the edge of the cascading waterfalls near the front of Celestial Park, there is another kiosk being constructed. The vertical supports are being installed while the roof can be seen being put together nearby before being lifted into place on top of the vertical beams. There is a new smaller waterfall that has been formed separate to the larger cascading waterfalls that will help feed the basin in front of Atlantic. At the top of the cascading waterfalls, the beginning of the waterfall basin has been painted. With that last detail inside of Epic Universe, it is time to check in just south of the park at Stella Nova and Terra Luna Resorts. At Stella Nova, colorful pavement is in progress inside of the traffic circle leading guests to and from the parking lot. Inside of the pool area, there have been several circular concrete shapes formed around the pool. These shapes are likely for trees to be planted later on during construction. Along the backside of the hotel, 
outside of the lobby entrance to the pool, concrete is being poured as we get closer to the pool being surrounded by concrete. The concrete along the maintenance dock has been completed as well and we should start to see deliveries to this dock soon. Next door at Terra Luna, the colorful tiles have now wrapped around both ends of the resort. The pool area is beginning to be cleared out, similar to how it was cleared out for Stella Nova. Alongside the hotel, there is a sidewalk being formed from the lobby entrance to one of the ends of the hotel. As we get closer to 2025, we are all getting anxious about the opening of Epic Universe. For those who say it will not open next year, Universal has recently posted on Twitter that they are opening a new theme park next year. This confirms that Epic Universe is still on track to open next year in 2025. If you enjoyed this Universal Epic Universe construction update, be sure to leave a like and do not forget to subscribe so you do not miss the next Epic Universe construction update. Until next time travelers, have a great one.